Hi, I'm John, the Community Currency, Unilex, which is United Nations Local and International Employment Trading Software. And today I'm reporting on Japan, what's happening with complementary currencies there. An article by Richard Coleman, JD, titled Cultural Contacts and Complementary Currencies from colemannight.com slash content underscore node slash show slash 366. Wonderful article leading into the other stories in from Japan. Cultural Contexts and Complementary Currencies by Richard Coleman, J.D. The success of any currency is largely determined by the cultural dynamics and values within a society. And he must mean that the, the success at people using it more and more and more. So here he goes. With a compliment, what is a complementary currency? A basic definition of complementary currency is appropriately designed social and economic networks with a directory of goods and services which encourage cooperation and reciprocation, self-reliance and mutual aid, local production, micro-small enterprise development, socio-economic solidarity and economic justice for the meeting of needs, cultural revitalization, socio-economic solidarity, and rural reconstruction. Wow! Is that all you can do when you got a good, well-running chips system? Wow! And he goes, phew! What does all of that mean? Well, it sounded pretty good. In layman's terms, complementary currency can be best understood as bartering. But it is not bartering. Bartering involves a simple exchange between two people, while CCs, complementary currencies or community currencies, create a unit of exchange that can be used among many people. And I prefer hours instead of green dollars, but as long as you link your hours to the number of green dollars, I don't care. For example, time units, currency, or service units, currency, can be created for many to receive and give services. One performs a service now in exchange for another at a future date. The opportunities for service are expansive, elder care, property maintenance, creative expression, and so on, and can be used over one's lifetime, a time bank. Complementary currencies make a great deal of sense. They enable exchanges between people that might otherwise be impossible. However, <clears throat> they seem to require something over and above primary trading currencies. They seem to require a certain attitude on the parts of the people using them, and usually that's being broke. It leads one to ponder the question, why do some countries integrate the applications and philosophies of complementary currencies more easily than others? Well, it depends how comfortable you are. If you've had a crash, if you've been broke, and a lot of people have been, then you decide, okay, I'll take it instead of taking nothing. Complementary currencies are currently employed in a host of countries, yet from almost every measure, Japan has most successfully integrated complementary currency systems throughout their country. In contrast, the success of complementary currencies in such countries as the United States and Brazil has been much more limited to specific cities. That's right. All things considered, this appears to have a strong cultural component. Effective time-based currencies seem to have three necessary components. First, a social need that is not being filled by international trading currencies. Right, people with no money. Second, an efficient and inexpensive transportation system to allow people to physically get to the point of the trade. And third, cooperation among interested parties. And with computers, wow, they can they cooperate. At best, there is only limited success when one of the, these three elements is missing. The United States and Brazil have needs in and around specific cities that are not easily met by any national currency. They could be ideal for using time-based complementary currencies. In local situations, the transportation hurdle, how to get to a location, to perform the service in lieu of national currency, is easily overcome by walking or public transportation. However, broader uses have proven difficult. On a national scale, it's much harder because the ability to travel from one place to another is confined. Far-flung transportation systems have made it far more difficult for any time any given time-based complementary currency to gain traction. But remember, an IOU for a night in one town is worth an IOU for a night in another like I did 10 years ago. You can do it too. 
This has limited their successes. Too bad. Confining them to specific geographic regions. Well, when they all accept time, why aren't their IOUs ex ex acceptable at the other places? Silly. Unless the country's land mass is tiny, this problem will exist and interfere with large-scale applications. The implications of this bar uh, barrier may explain part of the reason for the local successes in the United States, such as Ithaca, New York. The best. For con a dinky toy, but the best. For contrast, we can look to Japan. In report dated February 16, 2006, Toshiharu Kato notes that some 800 communities in Japan now issue time-based complementary currencies. Wow! According to Mr. Kato, the original sponsor and leading protagonist in Japan's complementary currency movement, this represents about 16% of those who do so throughout the world, despite Japan's comparatively small geographic size. So almost everybody's connected. Ah, no wonder no riots in Japan. The feat is particularly remarkable considering that Japan represents only 2% of the world's population. Yet Japan's penetration represents the largest use in history of complementary currency in any economy. Hey, Abe Lincoln used greenbacks, and that was 100%. And uh, King Henry I used tallies, and that was 100% his own currency, complementary to gold. Now, uh, what makes it even more miraculous is that it has occurred in the second largest economy, and the movement only started in 1999. So they only started their own chips in 1999, and then everybody's using their own chips now. Kato ignited this movement in an attempt to solve Japan's rapidly growing aging population's need for nursing care. With this realm, the system would work like this. A person gives care to someone other than a family member. In the process, he or she accumulates time credits, which are subsequently banked electronically. These banked hours can be used by a designated person at a later date, and we'll take them in Canada to put you up if you contact us. There is no interest component at this time. Keep it that way. This system has worked wonderfully to provide care and company for Japan's aging population. Well, if you want your one-hour IOU to be worth an hour, you can't charge no interest, or it'll inflate. <laughs> you can't inflate an hour. Why try? Why have these currencies been so successful in Japan? Personally, I believe Japan has been so successful because they have trained their population at a very early age to consider the needs of the whole society for many generations. Hmm. A sort of like... Not rich, not poor. Much of this behavior is explained by the Japanese word called wa. I have done some direct research on this notion by looking at blogs and other descriptors. As near as I can tell, wa is similar to the Hebrew word shalom, Hawaii's aloha, and Italian word ciao. These words are very hard to translate into English, but we seem to get close with such words as harmony, cooperation, and peaceful coexistence. In Japan, it also means ancient Japan, its meaning also describing Japanese society working in harmony. There is nostalgia and honor and duty and necessity associated with Wa, engendering a culture of cooperation. Well, no wonder they loved interest free money. I take this to discern that Wa means that Japanese society is predisposed towards the cooperation required to make complementary currencies a success, and why North Americans and others don't get very big too fast. But then again, we've got saboteurs. And it's pretty tough to sabotage software in Japan, right? For example, Japanese school children help clean their schools. To quote the National Clearinghouse for U.S. Japan Studies website, high school students sweep the classrooms in the hallways, empty trash cans, clean restrooms, clean chalkboards, chalk erasers, and pick up trash from the school grounds. And I suggested to the Brantford mayor he pay students with bus pass dollars. In other words, bus pass credits on their cards that we have. Same idea. So, spice at stanford.edu slash digest slash japan slash digest 9. In, Nove in the November 18, 2004 Japanese Times, Alice Gordenker describes the moral education required by the Ministry of Education National Curriculum. It requires school children to promote the moral development of children throughout daily activities, such as cleaning the school, caring for pets and plants on the premises, and special activities, clubs, student council, field trips, and volunteering. These activities Activities are standard at Japanese schools, as are pep talks and posters encouraging good manners and hard effort. 
In a blog dated August 31st, 2005, Mr. Joy Ito describes his neighborhood as having an unstated policy of helping each other in a sort of mutual aid society. Well, if they got their own chips allocating the work fairly, who's going to complain? Uh, for example, when a neighbor died, he assisted with the funeral and that all of this was expected until it was complete. That type of training is rare in the United States. Considering Japan's success with complementary currencies, perhaps it would behoove us to consider the virtues of some Japanese-style moral education as we consider the possibilities of complementary currencies as part of what we need for facing known and unknown challenges. Hey, going broke's all it takes for people to wise up usually. They did in Argentina, they did in Japan, now it's the U.S. turn. Let's see how long it takes for them to wise up and get on their own community currency lifeboats.